All right, let's talk about George Karloftis, a guy who was a first-round pick by the Chiefs. Some people, including myself, loved out of college. In year one, you could you know debate how good of a, uh, a year it was. So let's talk about what Karloftis is, what he brings to the table, where he could improve, all of that good stuff. So first, let's talk about just what our expectations were for him going in. If you look at his pro football focus grades from each of the last three years he was in college, and keep in mind, while the 2020 grade is low, it was in just 148 snaps. Uh, the 2021 grade was very good, uh, in 87.2, uh, and, you know, for this type of thing, I know some people like to say, ah, PFF grades, who cares, especially at the college level, what does that matter? Actually, for defensive linemen, it matters a lot. Guys who have good PFF grades at the college level have very high hit rates at the NFL level. It's a very good predictor of future success. And if you look at his sort of splits in certain areas, so what you're seeing here is his grade in specific categories, and then also uh, that dot you see on the screen. The further to the right it is, the better he is compared to his peers, compared to other college players. So uh, you definitely see on this chart that the pass rush stuff is what made him special and why he was drafted. Over 90 uh, grade in the pass rush grade. Uh, the run defense only 75.1. So definitely a pretty big disparity there. But a 23.6 pass rush win rate is absurdly high. I mean, we're talking great stuff there with that kind of grade. Run stop rate, you know, not great. 7.1. Again, good for college. He was a good college run stuffer. But when you're talking about NFL level prospects, that's a bit concerning. Uh, when you add on, you know, people weren't overly impressed with his athleticism. Uh, that's kind of why maybe he fell a bit in the draft, despite very good you know, PFF grades and things like that. But his PFF grades at the NFL level definitely took a bit of a hit as just a 50.2 grade overall defensively, which is a bit of a bummer for a guy that you kind of hoped could come in and be an immediate impact player. Now, he still had over 800 snaps, which is crazy to think for like a rookie player uh, who, you know, it's, it's not like they desperately needed edge rushers. They had a pretty decent amount of guys who can come in and play. So the fact that he got over 800 snaps, granted, you know, uh, the Chiefs got uh, three extra games this season because of, you know, uh, the, you know, the playoffs. So that's factoring in. And to be honest, I actually thought that he did show flashes like, Again, I know that the consistency wasn't there, but I did think he showed some flashes. Uh, but, you know, you look at the pass rush grade, for example, that was actually, you know, th that was fine. Again, still not great, but it was fine overall as a whole. The run defense is where things kind of uh, were a bit more of an issue. So let's watch some college tape and let's talk about what he was and maybe how that, you know, how we view it now after seeing a full year of George Karloftis at the NFL level. Like, one thing he did a lot was just use his power to win, which, you know, when you think about it that way, anytime you have one move like that that you're able to use pretty consistently, there's always going to be that concern of will it work at the NFL level, and it didn't quite work as well at the NFL level. Something like this, he pulled off a lot in the college level. This is going to be in the run game, because like I said, he was an effective run uh, defender at the college level. You have a tight end who's going to be blocking him right here. And watch that power he has to just drive the tight end a full yard back right away. I mean, that power is definitely where Karloftis was able to get his wins. And he has, uh, you know, a, an ability now to try and come out and make the tackle. That's going to be exactly what he does. He does make the tackle. They're not able to pick up the first down. And these are the kind of things that Karloftis did just did consistently at the college level uh, was, you know, using his power to find ways to win. But also stuff like this, where this is not just going to be a pure power move. He's going to use his speed as well. He definitely could uh, use his footwork and use his speed to find ways to win. Watch how right when this play begins, you're going to see that that's exactly what he does. He's using his speed to get around the edge. So for the right tackle, he's not totally in position to block Karloftis, which isn't the worst thing in the world because what you can do when you're at this spot is get your left hand uh you know for the left tackle get his left hand kind of on the hip area of curl off this and just drive him behind the quarterback that's something he could try to do however he barely even moves Carl off this and Carl off this is able to you know get his hand up and you know knock away that throw really good stuff from Carl off this and again these are the kind of things that he was able to do consistently at Purdue that maybe didn't quite work as well at the NFL level I think is fair to say 
and also stuff like this, where what's going to happen on this play is, uh, so you see where he's lined up on the screen. He is actually going to be unblocked at the line, but that doesn't mean he's unblocked, period. It's going to, again, be a running play, uh, and, you know, watch what happens. So you see how, you know, they had a player who's going to be running over to try and get in position to block him. That's what they're trying to do here. They had a player flashing over to try and get in position to block Carl Loftus, but still, uh, can he get a hand out and actually slow him down? Well, typically, NFL guys are getting over and they're getting in position to do it, but Carl Loftus is quick enough, at least at the college level, to get away with this kind of thing. So then when he gets over, he is able to quickly make a tackle and get a big tackle for a loss there on a third down and eight, which maybe that's not the play you run on third down and eight, but that's a conversation for another day. So yeah, those are kind of my thoughts on Carl Loftus as a whole a little bit is like, I do think that a lot of what he did, or at least a chunk of what he did at the college level doesn't really work at the NFL level. But for me, the kind of the way that I see it is I think enough still worked at the NFL level. Like, you know, we talk about some of these guys that had maybe disappointing rookie years. And, and to be honest, I would kind of uh, put Kyle, Carl Loftus in that area. But I don't even know if I fully would because he showed flashes as a rookie. And I just think doesn't have quite the consistency. But that's almost to be expected as a young player. And I thought he got better as the season went along for him. He was able to still make some key plays and had an impact in them winning a Super Bowl, so if you can do that, you're a good draft pick just in general. If you have an impact in your team winning a Super Bowl, uh, you know, it doesn't matter how much they give up for you. Winning a Super Bowl is winning a Super Bowl. You're happy with it. But even beyond that, I do kind of feel like he is one of those players that I do expect could have a much better year uh, two than year one. That checks out to me, and kind of his profile is that of a guy who tends to play better in year two than he did in his first year, so why wouldn't he be someone who can uh, you know take the next step? And he already is pretty good with his hands. That's something that he definitely had at the college level, but maybe didn't rely on a ton of, and I think now just has to work on the technique a little bit more and find ways to win more doing that, which I think he can do, and I think he will do. But again, when you're winning without having to use your hands, well, why would you use your hands, right? You just, you know, run by the guy and get to the quarterback. That's what you should be doing. Your goal is to win at the college level. And we saw flashes in the college level and at the NFL level of him then using his hands to find ways to win that way. So personally, I think he will do that. And I think he will continue to get better. And I would not be overly concerned. Like, listen, do you want a scenario where a guy comes into the league and just is immediately awesome right away? Of course. Of course, that's what you want. But it doesn't always happen that way, right? Sometimes these things take time. And for Carl Loftus, it's poten it will potentially take time. So we'll see what happens he heading into year two. But I wouldn't be discouraged necessarily if I'm a Chiefs fan. But yeah, those are my thoughts on George Carl Loftus as a whole. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.